parody. And then there's like the improbable. And again, it's early. Straight ahead, the NFL Live guys break down four head scratching turnarounds. And the dive back somehow the underdogs Wednesday in Arizona. Best record in the NL. Meanwhile, Cub fans still fearing the worst. We go inside the psychosis and the neurosis when sports are returned. <laughs> Get the granola. It's like picking a great defensive player like Brian Erlacher. It's smart, it's sensible, you'll never regret that. Dandy doodles. What makes them different makes them great. Mike and Mike in the morning. Have a real meal for lunch. Come to KFC for any of our new $2.99 deals. World famous chicken, choice of a side, and a flaky biscuit. A real deal for lunch for just $2.99 at KFC. Step up to a beer brewed longer. Step up to exceptional taste that's never filling. Ninety-nine calories, zero grams of fat. Budweiser Select. Step up. Hey, we have your room ready for you. Introducing the all. Mercury Sable. With room to spare in here, here, and here. And the most spacious car in its class is also rated the safest full-size car. No one else can say that. Plus, Sable gets 28 MPG highway. And with the navigation system, you'll find even more wide open spaces. Mercury Sable is smarter through and through. You've got to put Mercury on your list. Let's check out who's in my little brother's faves. <laughs> it's all animals, dude. A horse, a chicken, a turtle, some like a giraffe. <laughs> Look at these giraffe. <laughs> all right, which one of you loses the pig? <laughs> <laughs> Who's in your faves? With my faves, each family member gets unlimited calls to any five people, and that's to any number, even landlines. T-Mobile, stick together. Have a real meal for lunch. Come to KFC for any of our new $2.99 deals. World famous chicken, choice of a side, and a flaky biscuit. A real deal for lunch for just $2.99 at KFC. The Spurrier plan, year three, is right on track in South Carolina. He's got the Gamecocks out of the gate at four and one. But there's a wildcat named Woodson who does nothing but win. Number 8, Kentucky, at number 11, South Carolina, Thursday at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. Wrigley Field might be the happiest ballpark in baseball. It is all sunshine and old-style beer, no worries and nostalgia. Reasonable expectations, optimism run amok, and the spirit of Harry Carey. Which brings us to the Chicago Cubs postseason, where only two things can happen. You can win the World Series or not win the World Series. And in the case of Cubbies fans, uh, both those are bad. Win and that lovable loser's label and a whole lifestyle takes a fatal hit. Lose and, well, all those curses continue. Mike Greenberg with a view from aisle four, row eight, seat 113. That's the Bartman chair. In order to understand what Steve Bartman has come to mean in Chicago, you have to first remember the classic words of Roseanne Rosanna Dana on Saturday Night Live. It's always something. In Chicago, for a hundred years now, it's been something. Either a black cat walks through the on-deck circle or a billy goat couldn't get a ticket on eBay. Since before the Yankees had ever won a World Series, before Cubs fan Ronald Reagan was even born, since before Arizona, home to the Cubs now during spring training, was even a state, it's been something. No one has suffered more than Cubs fans. No one has hurt worse than Cubs fans. In order to understand what Steve Bartman means in Chicago, you have to understand two things. First, the Cubs never win. Second, it is always someone else's fault. The fan reached up and took it right out of his glove. If I see Steve Bartman walking down LaSalle Street today in Chicago, I would probably try to strangle him if I recognized him today. So in order for Bartman to ever be forgiven or forgotten, he needs one of two things to happen. Step back! Step back! Either the Cubs to win or someone else to replace him as the reason for the suffering. 
he is going to be blamed for time immemorial for the Cubs not making it to the World Series. Since Bartman's blunder, things have gotten worse, not better. Some wounds are not healed by time, they just grow deeper, especially when a year after the Bartman ball eluded a Lou. After 86 years, the Boston Red Sox are the champions of the baseball world. And then the year after that. The White Sox have won the World Series and they're mobbing each other on the field. And so now there is one. One cursed franchise, one impossibly long drought, one furious fan base watching a ticker tape parade in its own city for the franchise it lives to look down on. Although, if you peek inside the rubble, you might find a ray of hope. So, with the team in the playoffs and Bartman still nowhere in sight, what does the Cubs fan think today? Steve Bartman, uh, well... An unfortunate guy that uh, at one time I wanted to strangle him, but <laughs> after all these years, I kind of figure I forget the guy. He was a victim of yeah, victim of circumstance, victim exactly, of circumstance. Yeah. I think we've got the pieces in place, and all of our good guys are, are hot right at the end of the season where they need to be. I used to be a huge, die-hard Cub fan, huge. I think like a bad boyfriend. They just broke my heart so many times, and I sort of laid back a little bit. They got me again. They got me believing again, and damn! That is who the fans of the Chicago Cubs are today. They still fill their historic little ballpark. They still sing during the seventh inning. And this week, for the first time since Bartman, they have a chance to believe that next year has finally arrived. Well, the curse of the Billy Goat didn't really start until 1945. The Cubs' playoff failures, as, as Greeny pointed out, they stretched back to 1908. They're 18 and 44 in the postseason since, one and eight in series clinchers over that time. Bob Holtzman on the Cubs and what they're up against this time around. Snakes mostly. The Diamondbacks are a difficult team to figure. They were 18 games over 500, yet were outscored by 20 runs. They had the best record in the National League but many still see the Cubs as the favorite. It's a perception that doesn't bother the Diamondbacks one bit. I got to believe most of the series we played in this year, we were the underdog going in uh, with the, the youth that we've had and the inexperience that we've had during the course of the season. <laughs> Not a whole lot of people expected us to be here, and we've defied logic all year, so we really could care less. At this point, we're looking at it like we have nothing to lose. For some reason, they, they won 90 games this season. For some reason, they, they, they are in the playoff. So that means that they, they, they have a good team. While the Cubs are on national television almost every day, Arizona center fielder Chris Young says the reason the Diamondbacks are perceived as the underdog is that a lot of people across the country haven't seen them play. Young promises the Diamondbacks will make a good impression. In Phoenix, Bob Holtzman, ESPN. All right, Bobby Perry, 18-game winners who have never won a postseason game will take the hill in the series game one. Carlos Zambrano, Brandon Webb, Game one of the NLDS between these two squads. ESPN Radio 935 Eastern. First pitch scheduled for 10.07 on TBS. Presetting a couple of Sports Center's top stories. Madison Square Garden must pay $11.6 million to a former team executive after a jury found Isaiah Thomas and MSG had sexually harassed Anuka Brown Sanders. The NBA said Tuesday they will not fine or suspend Thomas. Andrew Jones won't return to the Atlanta Braves next year. GM John Schulholz made the announcement Tuesday. Jones a free agent this offseason after hitting just 222, 26 homers and 94 RBIs. Is that a good call? Here's some other good and bad calls from college football. Kirk Herbstreet joining us. Same spot each week here on Sports Center. Miller Lite. Good call, bad call. Kirk. The voice of college football debating you, the fan, on ESPN.com. Here's number one, Kirk. LSU deserved to jump USC atop the AP poll. 78% say yes. Kirk, good call or bad call? Wow, impressive number there. I think that's a good call, Jay. I really do. I think it had more to do with how USC looked against Washington than how LSU looked against Tulane. But we'll find out this weekend when LSU plays Florida if they're deserving of that number one ranking. But I agree with the fans. Let's go to the next one. South Florida is now the best team in Florida. 60% say no. Good call, bad call. 
That's another good call by the fans, Jay. I really look at the Florida Gators. I know they stumbled last week. I still think that they own the Sunshine State. There's no doubt in my mind that with Tim Tebow and this offense, the Gators will rebound. I know they have a tough one this weekend, but Florida, to me, is still by far the best team in the state of Florida. Last one for you, Kirk. Kentucky's Andre Woodson is now college football's best quarterback. It was close, but 52% say no. Good call or bad call? I think that's a bad call. I think Andre Woodson has emerged as the guy right now in college football. And if he, if he could pull off an upset on Thursday night at South Carolina, he will set up a showdown in Lexington the following week with LSU. I think he is the cream has risen, and right now he's the top quarterback in the country, without a doubt. He's Kirk Herbstreet, Miller Lite. Good call, bad call. Good Call, Bad Call is brought to you by Miller Lite. Now that's a good call. If it weren't for the attack,